Yes, I want to start the stream. We are starting! Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Jesus, I don't put your finger in every person. Oh, sharp. Is that Benz? Huh? Is that Benz? Uh, yes. The XCRB. Hey, why Can I see it? Yeah. You may. Why the letter B? I think we're going live. Do you guys have that power start back? I think it's working. It's working. Tim, huh? Do you guys have that power start back right here? Yes. Please don't take those things away. We need to oh, no, no. discuss them. Sure. This must mean I'm disgusting. This just mean I'm just obscene. All right, Bob. I'm going to announce on the books of faces what we are doing today. Thanks, so. If you would get started with the products, I think that uh, we can kill two birds one stone. That's, that's what you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I can. You can catch my drift. <laughs> I do. I can open up and down. Mm -hmm. All right, so, well, at least the first product we want to do an overview on right here in the live shows, uh, we're now carrying the HSGI Costa Leg Rig. Uh, I've personally been using this for quite a while, and it's I mean, ridiculously effective in at least like speeding up the transition between magazines. Um, I've used it from NorCal all the way over to Atlanta, Georgia, and I have zero complaints. This is really effective. Um, it is a bit pricey, um, but that's because, you know, the taco pouches by themselves, these double deck ones, are $42 a piece. And if you want to get all these pouches together just by themselves, it's going to run around $108. Um, so for, I guess, like $31 extra, dollars, you get the, the leg rig set up. And to be honest, like, I believe we're the only... Uh, place online where you can use coupon codes to drop this uh, from $139 down. Um, I believe most of the sites sell it just at $139. So if you get it from us, you're going to get cheaper than just about anywhere else. So that's a really sweet deal. Uh, these taco pouches, uh, if you're not aware, you can fit not just mags, but a variety of other utility uh, items such as flashlights, uh, multi-tools, medical tools. What I've used them for is actually in these magazine slots uh, for M4 style magazines. I'll actually put uh, Thunder Bee or Tornado Grenades, they actually fit in there and allows me to access them pretty quickly. Um, but I use that in addition to putting, you know, I'll put my own four mags in here. Um, uh, yeah, I actually at Timber Spot 5, I was running this. I had a flashlight here, two pistol magazine pouches, a Tornado and a Thunder Bee. So very versatile system, uh, and you can actually switch this from your left or right side. Um, so yeah, this is really awesome. Uh, I like how high it rides because uh, it actually you just get access to your magazines quicker. And the fact that the, how these taco pouches are made, they keep your magazine snug. Um, and you can also adjust them with these little uh, uh, push-pull tabs right here. So really cool product. We now have them on airsoftgi.com, so make sure to check them out. Uh, my, my guess is they're probably going to go pretty fast, just like our taco pouches. Um, all right, so moving on next, we are actually have, we're carrying a, a couple different uh, G-Code style holsters. I believe this is the... Uh, the XST RTI holster, I think the XST means it has a hood on top and the RTI, that's a rapid transition interface system. But basically we're carrying these holsters now in a variety of different variety of different Cryptek camo patterns, which looks really awesome. Um, I know we've got... Cryptek or Cryptex? Uh, I thought it was Crypt Cryptek, yeah. Okay. Um, this is Cryptek Ma uh, Mandrake. Uh, our good friend Greg Wong has been rocking uh, Cryptek for quite a while. Um, I believe Bo from American Milsim was rocking Cryptek at Timber Spot uh, 4. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it looks pretty cool, and uh, I definitely like the variety of you know camo schemes. This is uh, Typhon. Typhon. This is Mandrake. Can you give me that other one? I can. And this color is Highlander. That's a really good name for it. Highlander. Um, so, yeah, if you guys are in the market. Sword. <laughs> there can only be one. Um, <laughs> so, if you guys are in the market. Get that one. Yeah, there can only be, be one. one. Um, so yeah, if you guys are on the market for G code holsters and you like Cryptek, this is a really good camo scheme that honestly looks badass as all hell on these G code holsters. So highly suggested. All right, now next up, we've got the GHK G5. Uh, we've been actually taking this out to field events recently, and we've got a lot of positive response from this gun. Uh, I like this in particular because it's made out of Dupont polymer, and uh, I haven't seen. Uh, any other guns, as far as I'm aware of, an airsoft that are made out of this polymer, it's actually really lightweight. It seems as being like 
ridiculously strong. So uh, it's well durable, I guess you could use as well. Um, but because it is so lightweight, the kick on this thing is actually more so than you would expect. It's got quite a bit of kick, and it's also probably one of the more ambidextrous guns we have in our uh, in our inventory. I don't think we were mentioning that one today, but go ahead. Oh, Carry here. On. Um, you got a fire selector on the left and right side. You got a magazine release on the left and right side. And you can even switch the charging handle uh, off to the left side. We also have a foldable stock and an extendable stock. Um, I don't know. It's just a really fun gun. And uh, we've got a lot of good response from people who have, who have actually used it as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, I would highly suggest checking this out. It's, you know, like I said, really fun. All right. Um, Bad Guns for sale for $2.95, by the way. It's also available in black and tan. Thank you. Which um, is delicious. And the gun is also look cool. Yes. Uh, it does not come with uh, the Micro T1 or the uh, Angle 4 grip. We just put that on there to flesh it out. Um, but that is a gun. Something uh, almost just as important. We've got uh, the Lancer Tactical PDW, uh, licensed by Knight's Armament Company. This is actually a full metal Lancer Tactical PDW. And it goes for just under $200. Um, and a couple different things about this. First of which, uh, we added on this red dot. We added on this Noveski can. But you do get uh, an additional... It's not really um, a can, is it? Or, it's like a loudener. Yeah, no, this is a Amplifier. loudener. Yeah, I'm sure people call it cans before. Um, it does come with actually uh, an additional outer barrel extension. So if you want to make your uh, want to have a longer inner barrel, uh, you can just add this on here, buy an, uh, an inner barrel aftermarket, and add it on. So pretty sweet. Um, cans typically refer to like barrel extension silencers. Yeah, like that's that. true. I guess you're right. Um, cool thing about this though is uh, you actually get a different peck box than you would uh, with the hundred hundred eight dollar polymer Lancer Tactical PDW. Uh, this one looks a little bit cooler. It actually has an external uh, additional rail. So that's that's kind of neat. Um, I believe that peck box style is called the DBAL. Hmm, the DBAL. Yeah. Dash I, actually. Uh, what it stands for, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, the only external thing on this that is polymer, um, I believe, is actually the pistol grip, but that's not that big of an issue. Uh, we also have flip up front and rear iron sights. Foldable stock, as expected. Uh, shoots in the neighborhood of 380 to 390. Um, but yeah, for you know just under $200, you get. Peck box, gun, charger, mid capacity magazine, battery, basically everything you need to play except for BBs and eye protection. So pretty solid deal. I'm really happy Lancer Tactical is coming out with this. I think that is really cool because if you look at the PDW, if you're actually interested in a PDW, you've got the $108 version, which is the all plastic version from Lancer Tactical. Then you've got this one that's sub 200 bucks, which gives you a full metal body. Still has the same awesome internals. Um, that the original Lancer Tactical one has, but you get the rigidity of the metal body. It's still officially licensed by Knight's Armament, and if you've got the big bucks, you can go for the BFC version, which is like four or something, I think. Um, mm. Awesome gun in its own right. Uh, the body, I think, is probably a little bit better quality, made out of aluminum. Uh, the gearbox is obviously going to be made by BFC, which is, you know, they have a long-standing history of making good quality stuff. So there's a PDW out there for you in your price range, no matter what your budget is. You do have a functional bolt catch and uh, bolt release on this too. So indeed, no, but they're there. all they're all pretty solid guns, and for under two hundred bucks, man, that is a solid deal. Yeah, I remember when this first came out, or this style gun first came out, it was pretty darn popular. Yeah, especially with this. Uh, uh, all the most of the ones I saw when they first came out had this uh, external, like this longer outer yeah. barrel. Well, when VFC, VFC, I think was the first company to actually make a PDW for airsoft, and I know our friend Gene was like on top. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he got, got one of the first ones that that became available, even before. The written trademarks on it was just a, a sterile looking gun, but uh, he liked it enough to get it. Hmm. Well, Tim, why don't you talk about this for a little bit? This is, oh man, I really need the build list for this, and it doesn't look like Mark gave this to me. This is a custom XCR uh, built by our tech Ben. Oh, so, really? Yeah, so we've had a couple of custom XCRs on our website XCRF, made by Frank, XCRA, made by Aaron Mora, XCRS, made by Spencer. So this one is affectionately called the XCRB because Ben put it together. Wow. Um, as far as the outside goes, you know, there's not much you can customize on the gun itself. So we've tricked it out with a couple of things like the Magpul. Uh, I think this is the RBG, the rail vertical grip. It's got some nice flip-up sights here. This is an actual Mag... Oh, this is a PTS flip-up. Uh, I'm sorry. PTS CTR, CTR stock. stock, not the MOE stock. We've got the Noveski uh, amplifier on here. We've got a PEC-15 that actually comes with the gun. However, Ben did something really cool. Because this thing has the M4 buffer tube on here, he's wired the gun to the back. <laughs> so you can actually fit a wider array of batteries than you normally would with the XCR. Because the way the XCR comes, it's actually a really unique airsoft gun. You can either run an external battery or you can get a special um, XCR battery that will fit in the upper receiver. 
The problem with running the battery up front is that the wires are kind of exposed, kind of killing that realism. The problem with running the battery in the uh, upper receiver is that you need a specific type of battery to run it, and it can be kind of a pain in the ass to take the gun apart just to put the battery in. But the fact that Ben has wired this thing to the back and put the battery in the buffer tube means that it's much more user-friendly, and you can fit uh, a wider array of batteries in there because there's quite a bit of space, actually in the buffer tube. So mm -hmm. this thing is tricked out with some mag cool stuff. I actually kind of like this site on here. This is an AIM Sports Reflex site. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those sites that, you know, senses the light around you and then turns the red dot on. Oh, wow. So there's no battery. It just runs off of whatever ambient light is around. So definitely in the daytime, it's going to be nice and bright. That's pretty cool. But yeah, you got to keep that covered up. Otherwise, it's going to be on perpetually. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the XCR, one of my favorite unique guns out there. I mean, it has the same feel as an M4, and so since I use M4s a lot, the functions and the feel of this gun are going to translate really well. Um, but one thing that this gun has that uh, an M4 doesn't have is that the buffer tube is not on the same plane yeah. as the upper receiver, and so uh, use with this gun and a full face mask and optics is much easier than your normal M4 because you have plenty of space here. Let's say you had a face mask, so you don't have to get a really good cheek load, but you can still get your eyes behind your sights. And so for you discerning airsoft users that use your sights out there, this is definitely something that you can pick up to be unique, but also be compatible with your existing M4 magazines if you have some, which is highly probable. Mm. Yeah, I definitely like the two-tone look of this gun. Black and tan. Yeah, I think this yeah. is a really good job by Ben. Yeah, it's kind of cool because the gun is tan. But even though the buffer tube and everything like that is all black, we've got some black Magpul ladder rail covers all on these. No, it really here. fits together really well. Indeed, indeed. He definitely did a good job on it, and he tuned it really well on the inside. I think uh, we shot this with a 7.4. Rate of fire was pretty decent, probably better than most stock guns. But with an 11.1 light poly battery, Ben tuned this thing to shoot about 30 BUs a second. So this thing is not like the highest of the high speed, but it's definitely not a low speed gun either. So it's a pretty... Pretty, pretty average rate of fire, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 30 BBs a second. Right. About that, average. Kind of high speed. Kind of. But yeah, I mean, the ergonomics of this gun are ridiculous. And I really, I mean, wires on the outside really kills it for me. And so I really like that he was able to wire the battery to the back. Yeah. It really adds that extra realism to it. And, you know, the gun is really light. It's made out of aluminum, and it's just a really solid gun overall. I think this is the first custom gun we've actually brought on a show from Ben. So this is a pretty yeah. good, like, first one from him. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Indeed. Yeah. I mean, the pec box is here just kind of for looks. Because he wired the gun at the back, you don't really need it there. So you can utilize that rail space right here for lasers, lights, whatever you want. Yeah, I'll probably flip over this magpul uh, the left side. Yeah, exactly. Indeed. But that's because I'm a right-handed shooter. So Yeah, I think it's actually supposed to be set up. Like, isn't the magpul like, supposed to, like this go forward. Sure. Whatever. Anyway, yeah. what else are we talking about? Um, I think we covered most of the products uh, we have out here except for those two and that thing. I don't even know what this is. Modular system hydration pack without reservoir. Okay, Mark brought these in. These are new Pantag products here. I have two of them here. Lightweight modular system. Okay, Ray saw this one up on the site. Oh, you know what that is? I bet you that's the hydration carrier for this rig. Oh, oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Like so we've got looks. a really lightweight chest rig here. It's like a chest panel. Looks like we've got some either a magazine. Looks like we've got two M4 mag pouches that are kind of kangaroo. We've got pistol pouches in front of it. These could either be a holster or radio pouch or more magazine pouches. We've got a molly space, you know, two by three uh, section on each side. Uh, obviously, it's Pantac, so it's made out of 1000D Cordura. It's DuPont coated Cordura, so you know if you get spills on it or anything like that, you can wipe it off easily. So looks like we've got a mesh pocket in here for maps and stuff like that. In addition to this thing, but uh, it looks like you can run this thing with the included straps or attach that hydration carrier to it. So these things are kind of made to run together. Uh, really good lightweight option if you don't need plates. I really say, or I really like the fact that this is so slim. Uh, they've got this elastic to hold it together, mm -hmm. and the fact there's so much Velcro real estate. This is a, a very low-profile uh, hydration setup. So this, yeah. is, I mean, just like a lot of the Pantex stuff, it looks really cool, and it's also pretty rugged. And I like the fact they've got these uh, um, knotted together, or at least like woven together, yeah. a piece of paracord, and they even sealed it up. I was a little bit heat right there, so that's pretty darn cool. But yeah, this is a solid hydration carrier. I can see this on a like really, like, I guess lightweight operator rig. Like if you were crawling through some swamps or something, you'd want this. Yeah, I actually I was going through the comments on my tactical gearhead, the one that I did for TDB5, and a couple of the comments were like, yeah, you know, I've really slimmed down my rig to, mm -hmm. you know, 
make myself a little bit more mobile. So, I mean, if you've got the plate carrier set up, that's cool, man. Plate carriers are good to go. Uh, but it's always nice to have a couple of rig options so that you can kind of customize what you're wearing based off of what you're wearing. That's going to harness. Yeah, so this will come with it so you can use the rig. Snake harness. Um, what's another cool thing about this uh, lightweight hydration pack is the fact that, you know, it comes with... I guess like shoulder straps as well as a belt buckle, so you can rub by, by yourself if you're going hiking, uh, you know, around a mountain or in the hills. Um, that's an option, but also they've got molly on the back, so you can molly this directly to like a plate carrier. Yeah, pretty sweet. Yeah, when it, when the the hydration carrier started coming out with that either or option, because it used to be you either had to get a hydration backpack or you had to get one that attached to molly. Yeah, and it was kind of a bummer if you needed to buy two basically if you yeah. wanted to use them for both. So. I definitely don't want to forget that. Nope. So we've got one more gun that uh, was custom built by our techs that we haven't gone over yet. Some of you might like it, some of you might not. Uh, it is a CQB gun. It's very, very yeah. small. And I don't even know what this thing is called, actually. Yeah, I don't really think we have a name for it, but uh, so far it does have uh, a zombie killer style low receiver. I believe this is a GNP. Uh, receiver. Looks like we've got a Daniel Defense 4-inch light rail system on here. We've got a PEC-15, even though we don't really need a PEC-15. This gun is not battery powered. It is a Polar Star. And so, let's see if I can pull this out here. Yeah, it's not going to help you at all. Pull further out. Um, this is actually the nozzle for the air tank. And so, traditional Polar Stars, you might see the tube come out here, but we've actually got it run out of the back of the receiver here. So, it does kind of hide it a little bit if you're looking for a prop gun or something like that. You can mm -hmm. kind of get away with it as opposed to having the tube out here, but uh, you know, we've got the P Magpul P-Mag on here matching this pistol grip. We've got a really unique stock on here. The Zombie Killer metal body is also really nice. Um, and, of course, on the inside, the piece de resistance is the Polar Star Fusion engine that is in this thing. And, man, this is a really tiny it's gun. It's very short. You can actually send the stock a little further, I think. Oh, really? Sorry, I don't want to do that. Here. Okay. Um, yeah, this is obviously designed for CQB. Um, but uh, what's really cool about this is that uh, I believe our tech department's designing three different custom guns. This is the shortest of them. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely they, you know. So they're going to build two more Polar Star versions similar to this? Uh, I don't know exactly similar. I believe they, all, they are all AR style platforms. Uh, but this is like they've got a short one. They've got a medium one. Obviously, they, you know, we just did a long range one with uh, Josh's gun. Yeah. Um, I wish we had the name for this. Um, but, uh, yeah, tech products. Yeah, yeah, this is short. I really, I mean, I like this for CQB. Obviously, I'm not one to use a Polar Star because, again, I like feedback on my guns. But for CQB, this, I mean, this seems for like... CQB, the smaller, the better. Oh, yeah. That, that was actually when, when, when Bob and I were playing a lot at uh, Airsoft Playground, what is now Tax City, a lot of guys were using um, the ICS M4 pistol, which is kind of a unique gun that was, that was new back in like 07, 08. And stuff like that, and it's essentially not much smaller than this. I mean, it was a M4 pistol grip, no stock on it, with a really short barrel. And you know, if you're talking about engagement distances between like 10 and 35 feet, you really don't need anything much longer than that. Mm -hmm. And those guys were able to easily maneuver around the field and uh, you know get a couple of easy shots, whereas it might have been more difficult for others. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, it's a CBLR. No idea. Don't know what it means. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the products that we have to go through for today. We do have a couple of announcements we want to let you guys know about. Uh, number one, tomorrow and the day after, there's going to be two mystery boxes going live. One's going to be a gas blowback mystery box, which I think is going live on Thursday. And tomorrow is an AEG-type mystery box. It's going to be a limited run of both. They're only going to have, like, 26 boxes mm -hmm. each. But uh, you can check those out on our website. It's got some pretty cool uh, opportunities to win stuff in there, like... In the gas blowback box, the WEMSK, which we're being a little mysterious about. We're not going to show it to you, but it looks very similar to a gun that's very popular in video games like Call of Duty and Battlefield. If you know what it is, feel free to uh, let people know in the comments. But uh, it's a gas blowback version of that gun, the MSK. It's pretty unique, and I have to say it's kind of surprisingly well built, to be honest with you. It's got an aluminum upper receiver, polymer lower receiver, but the thing that I like about it is the trigger is actually really nice on it. If I had to compare triggers between gas pullback guns, I would say that it's a lot better than the trigger on the LM4. There's no slack in the trigger, the brake is almost immediate, and because of that, the reset on the trigger is like right there. And so follow-up shots in semi-auto are going to be really quick and really accurate. 
Yeah, I heard you uh, playing with it earlier today, and you were going over like the trigger and all that, and you're pretty you're pretty pleased. I was. I mean, I'm I can't say that I'm like a, a connoisseur of fine firearms or anything like that. There's certainly other people out there that are much more versed in that field than I, but I can definitely tell the difference between a sloppy trigger and a really well put together trigger group. And so that trigger system on the MSK is pretty nice. Definitely. Um, one other thing we need to let you guys know about, in less than a month, the Rebel Training Camp is happening. But I want you to give them a breakdown on that. Absolutely. On October 19th, uh, that's going to be a Saturday in October, uh, we're going to have my, or Bob the Axeman's, I hate referring to myself in the third person, uh, Rebel Training Camp. Now, that's going to be, you know, a really fun day of Airsoft. It's all kind of um, centered around the idea that we're going to have folks that are either under 18 or have less than a year's experience playing airsoft. And we're going to teach them tips, tricks, and methods on how to play airsoft and be more effective on the airsoft battlefield. Basically just kind of uh, going over a lot of uh, the things that we find that folks that are new to the airsoft, uh, I guess, world uh, don't understand. Like, you know, you don't want to get eight people behind one tiny piece of cover. Cover. You want to make sure to, you know, cover your teammates and work as a unit as opposed to working by yourself. So, you know, we're going to be giving a lot of instruction just at least a little bit before the game and a lot on the field. Uh, and it's essentially going to be a Rebel training camp. I'm going to be uh, leading one side of the Rebels and then Jet from Desert Fox is going to leading, be leading the other other side of the Rebels. Um, one second. Somebody said that the MSK is a SCAR. That would be incorrect, even though technically, yes, the SCAR is a popular gun in the video games I've mentioned. But uh, Malicious in 10 is definitely on the right path. Go ahead, Bob. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's going to be a really fun day of Airsoft. And to be honest, for uh, I believe the price is about $30 on a website. And I believe that's only 2 to $3 more than the it's normal $2. two dollars more than the normal entrance to SC Village. Uh, and we're not just going to be playing an SC Viper. We're actually going to be playing on the woodland course that is mostly uh, you know, wood or jungle area along with the mount field. Uh, and then we're going to be heading later in the day over to SC Viper for some just straight up mount uh, airsoft gameplay. Yeah. But so, the key thing is, though, it's only two bucks more than your average day at SC Village. Yeah. So you're going to get the opportunity not only to play with Bob and Jet and some other people that are probably you would want to play with, um, but <laughs> the raffle prizes definitely are going to make up for that extra two dollar deficit. Um, not that it'd be a deficit, but it's it's a great bargain. Okay, so I mean, a normal day of airsoft is going to cost you about thirty bucks anyway. So. Uh, you're going to get a lot of extra perks for attending Rebel Training Camp. Absolutely. I mean, you will have also, did you mention the Tactical Gearhead competition? I did. Okay. So we are going to be having a Tactical Gearhead competition uh, based around the most innovative Rebel loadout. Now, this is, we're not looking for like high speed uh, loadouts, you know, where, you know, everything is taco pouches or Magpul or whatever. We're actually just looking for some innovative use of, I guess, some really unorthodox gear. Um, like, for example, at Tim vs. Bob 5, I couldn't figure out a way to, you know, get my flashlight pressure switch on my on my AK, so I just duct taped the hell out of it and got it onto the AK. The game's not really innovative, though. Uh, I mean, it's like the well, universal fix for everything. Yeah, yeah, but you're not going to see that on a Tim Imperial Guardsman's loadout. You're going to yeah, see that on a Rebel loadout. Like, for another example, at a Tim vs. Bob uh, 2, I believe, there are a lot of kids who are under 18 who showed up, a group of six, in fact, and they're all using their Jan Sport high school backpacks uh, just to carry BB. Uh, BBs, uh, water, uh, extra gas, and you know it was a really like good use of like what they already had instead of having like I'm sure they didn't have the money to buy a full on you know tactical yeah. backpack. I guess that's the idea behind the Rebel Loda. You don't want to make yourself just look ghetto because that's not going to get the job done. But you want to come up with innovative ways to keep your stuff on you without buying tactical gear. Yeah, you want to make what you have work for what you want to do. Yes. Okay, I'm going to go the ahead. Ganja turtle. Yes, we see the stuff here. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, uh, and that said, obviously, we are going to have the raffle. So, again, for $30, you know, it's going to be a really fun day. I'm going to be there signing autographs. So I'm going to stay till everyone gets uh, the autographs and things signed that they want. It's the opportunity to. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, make sure to sign up. And here's the thing is if you if you don't fall under, like, less uh, under 18 or less than a year's experience, you can still sign up and come out. You know, we'd love to have players from all walks of life and experience levels play. But we just ask that, you know, for those of you that are more experienced, like, you know, show up with a mindset of, you know, helping newer airsofters get into the sport because we want to grow the community and part of that is also you know not bringing like a 30 or 40 or 50 rate of fire gun out there because you know the last thing that a new player in airsoft wants to have happen is to yeah, just get lit up, up. Yeah, yeah get lit up with like 50 bb's in less than a second that's kind of going to put a dent in your day so to speak so i'm honestly going to be running either you know probably a spring shotgun and my co2 1911 um or some other low powered gun what's up these are the spec sheets for the custom guns that we <laughs> temper a warrior. <laughs> That's funny. 
um, for the guns that we just finished talking about. Uh, so we'll get to those in a second. Uh, one other announcement I need to make. If you're planning on going to the Rebel Training Camp and you need to get some supplies before, then the week before the Rebel Training Camp on October 12th, we're going to be having an, a, a sale at the Airsoft GS store in Los Angeles. So you're going to be able to get a discount off of everything you purchase there, at least qualifying items. Also, Echo One's going to be there to show off some of their new stuff. And there's going to be even deeper discounts for certain Echo One products. And so it's a great way to get in there and get the stuff you need for a game at a discounted price. Uh, so that's happening on October 12th at the GI Walk-In Store. You're not going to want to miss that. And then the game is happening October 19th at SC Vidage. Mm. And since we're on the subject of sales, this coming Saturday, actually, Josh, Frank, and myself will be in Virginia for our Boneyard sale. Um, so that is going to be pretty cool. The East Coast guys, you guys have not yet experienced a Boneyard sale. As far as I know, this is the first Boneyard sale that's happening yep. on the East Coast at GI Tactical in Virginia. So even if you don't live real close by, it would behoove you to show up at our sale because you're going to get the opportunity to purchase some stuff for really cheap. A lot of it just has some minor defects to it. Some things just need a fuse. Mm -hmm. And boom, you can get basically a brand new gun for a very, very heavily discounted price. On top of that, though, Josh, Frank, and I are going to be in Virginia pretty much for the week starting tomorrow. And uh, we're going to be playing at TRU on Friday night once we're done setting up for the sale. And we're going to be at playing at X-Zone on Sunday afternoon after the sale. So come out, enjoy some airsoft for the weekend, pretty much all weekend long, Friday through Sunday. Mm -hmm. We're going to be out there either playing airsoft or hanging out at the Boneyard sale. So come by and drop us a line. Uh, do you mind if I see some stuff about customer service? Go for it. All right. Uh, first of all, uh, to those of you watching, I'd like to tell you uh, to check out Airsoft Delta Squad 100. Uh, these folks uh, call into customer service. I've talked to them a few times. They've got a pretty cool YouTube channel. So, you know, go go over and check out Airsoft Delta Squad 100. Um, also, I'd like to say uh, uh, hello to Sam and Andrew Campbell. I uh, talked to these two brothers um, uh, last, uh, actually a couple times on the phone when I've been at customer service. I believe I'm going to be uh, working the customer service phone lines. Uh, off and on Mondays and Fridays. So if you feel like calling in and saying hi, uh, call in and say hi. It's always a fun, full, uh, fun-filled day when I'm there. And uh, thanks for calling in, Sam and Andrew Campbell. Of course, I remember you. I remember talking to you for quite a while. Um, I think at one point, like Sam, I was on the phone with Sam. Sam yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what that reminded me. Um, I was on the phone with Sam, and then he got his uh, brother in line. So I was basically speaking on speakerphone to both of them. So that was pretty fun. Very nice. Great mm -hmm. use of technology there. Indeed. So. Um, now that we have more info on these custom guns, let's bring them back up. This is called the Airsoft GI XCRB Tempura Warrior. Um, ben is Asian, although Tempura, I think, is Japanese, yes. and Ben is from Taiwan. So maybe there was a little mix-up there. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mentioned that uh, a lot of the upgrades to this you can't really see because they're on the inside of the gun. Let's see if I can get to the inside build this. All right, we've got a Lonex A2 motor in here. A magic box uh, cylinder head, magic box Teflon coated aluminum cylinder, magic box uh, extra strong POM piston, magic box uh, POM ball bearing, wait, polycarbonate ball bearing piston head, uh, Lonex ball bearings, 8mm, Mad Bull Blue Hopper Bucking, Lonex enhanced super gear set, high speed ratio, modify uh, SP120 spring, and that is it for the internals. Everything else you can see, like we've already mentioned, the magical stuff. This gun will come with a gun bag, and it will retail for $1,068.28. It's a lot of parts, though. It is a lot of parts. I mean, look at this build sheet, man. Like, this build sheet is full of stuff. <laughs> So the top part is like title and the cost and everything like that, and that whole middle section is the parts that went into this thing. So Ben went berserk when he put this thing together, and he spared no expense, and he put some top-notch stuff in there. I mean, Magic Box, Lonex, you really can't ask for anything better than that. And as far as our Polar Star Raptor, which is what this thing is called, a little bit cheaper at $9.92. Remember, the Polar Star Fusion engine by itself retails for over 500 bucks. So that's pretty much half the cost right there. We've got the GMP Zombie Killer Kit, Polar Star Engine, uh, Daniel Defense, blah, 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 blah. All right, so we've pretty much mentioned everything on here except for price. $9.92 for this bad boy. And like I said, half of it is the Polar Star Fusion Engine at $500. So you're definitely getting what you pay for there. I'm glad the surgery went well, Sam. And, well, Andrew, who had to go through it. Um, I'm, glad you're, I'm glad you're doing well. 
Uh, also, uh, what was that? Ghost Airsoft. Uh, I just want to say hi to Philip as well. I believe that's Ghost Airsoft. Um, well, that is pretty cool. Why don't we uh, also talk about... Oh, yeah, yeah, you already went over both the whole story and the XCR. Yes, yes, yes. Do, 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 do. Oh, dudes, dudes, buy in bulk and save. We've added a couple of uh, three-bag specials oh. onto our website. So, basically, if you were to buy three individual bags of BBs, it would cost you more than this three-bag special. So, we strategically price these to save you guys money. And so, when you buy in bulk, you're going to save, uh, you know, it's pretty much a general rule. Like, generally, when you buy in higher quantities of things, you can have the opportunity to save That's money right. on each individual item. So, definitely check out our bulk BB section. Uh, we used to have a lot of three-bag specials on our website a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, but some of those BB brands aren't around anymore, so on and so forth. So the list was kind of dwindling. We've revamped it with some of the B BBs that we have available, some of the popular ones like the G&G 20s and 25s, Airsoft GI BBs and stuff like that. Each bag of those BBs is already really affordable you know, compared to some of the other higher-quality brands like... I can't even think of it. But, you know, some BBs are more expensive than others. Um, but we bundled them together, and so you can actually say... Uh, a lot more when you buy three bag specials. So check those out on the website. Thank you, Mark, for putting it on that uh, little list there. Sheet of paper. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, Josh, Frank, and I are going to be going to Virginia. I'm actually kind of excited to get back over there and play a little bit of airsoft. I bet you also wish you were going to Battle Hack as well. I do wish I was going yeah. to Battle Hack. You know, one of the bummer things about uh, airsoft in Virginia is the fact that most of the fields are only open on the weekend. Yeah. Whereas, you know, in California, I could pretty much any day of the week, if I wanted to go to Inside, if I wanted to go to Tech City or something mm -hmm. like that, I can pick up and go. But uh, since we've got we've got three fields that I really want to hit up, True, Exxon, and Ball Hack. And since True and Exxon are a little closer, yeah, and I true. haven't played there yet. Oh, uh, you haven't played at True either? No. I went there to film. Oh, that's right. You didn't want to play. It yeah. was just Jet and I that played. It was just you and Jet. Embarrassing. Not really. For I don't you. think I was missing out, but uh, I have heard that uh, True has added quite a few they, things to their field recently. They've changed the field around to make it to make it immensely more playable for airsoft. Because what I've heard. Because originally, when you and I went there together, that was pretty much like they first opened up. Yeah, I mean, well, they had you know they had the martial arts training course uh, in a different part of the building, but they basically had like you know a shooting course where the targets shoot back, and then the other half was an airsoft course. Now the whole thing is an airsoft course, and it's actually you know it's really fun. They did a great job setting it up, and it's definitely a really cool CQB course. Yeah, I'm definitely so. looking forward to to going to visit True on Friday night, and X Zone is the place where I guess uh, some of the VA guys, including Jason Hills from our marketing, team, yeah, they went out and played. Uh, I think it was like a birthday thing yeah. for one of the guys. Yeah. And they were able to pull a pretty decent crowd out there at a, a relatively new field, I guess, X-Zone. Yeah. I actually haven't heard of it. I assume it's like a paintball field. I, yeah, I think that uh, that gentleman had, had walked, come up to our store a couple days before we opened. It was like, hey, I'm thinking about starting having airsoft games here. Do you want to put some of our flyers up? And yeah. We're like, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. He's really close. I think they only operate on the weekends. Yeah. Um, cool story, though, is uh, last time I went and actually played at uh, True, yeah. Tactical Response Unleashed, uh, we got to play with Walter. Mm. Walter's actually really fun to play airsoft with. He's aggressive. Yeah. Like he just runs right down that hallway and into the enemy. So I Some people don't know our CEO. Oh, no, he, he plays. He yeah. plays. So uh, if you get the chance, you know, go up and say hi. Uh, again, really fun to play airsoft with. Yeah, so. Walter's going to be there with us. I think Josh is going to be filming mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, but he does have his gear out there. Frank and I both sent our gear, so we're good going to be set up and ready to go. I had Mark do a little tuning to my scar so that uh, it shoots a little bit better than the stock form. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked to be heading out there. Um, and I'm actually kind of excited to see what Exxon is all about. Me too. I, I, I would like to see that. But sure. I do wish I was going to ball hack. I really was hoping we could fit it into the schedule. Unfortunately, there's not so much time. Uh, really quick, I'd like to say thank you to SARP Airsoft or SARP Airsoft. Uh, we really appreciate your business, uh, and we're glad our we uh, our website was what got you started. That's really awesome. We we're constantly trying to like you know make changes to it to make it better and more uh, customer friendly. So we really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a photo on I think Christopher Ratton posted it, the yeah. owner operator of Battle Hack. Yeah. Um, they were literally all marching down this one road in a square formation. And they said it, the tagline was like, "This is the most effective formation to use when going down a street while playing a chaos game." And in my mind, I was like, "What's a chaos?" I, what 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 kind of game necessitates you like in a square move? Like I would assume a zombie game, but it's like in the middle of the day and like everyone's aiming out. How many people were we talking about? Like, uh, no, no. Well, in the photo I saw, there's about like ten to twelve people, including Chris Ratton with a and an AK, and they're all aiming out, including one guy who's aiming um, to the rear with a bolt action. 
and uh, I just didn't know what what kind of game style of chaos it is. Those so. guys have some pretty creative stuff. Yeah, going on over at Ball Hack. I dare to say it's probably one of the best fields in the world that I've been to. They definitely have the facilities and space and the creativity to put on some really fun airsoft games. And I definitely had fun at TV before, and I really wish I could go back on this particular trip. But there will be chances in the future, I'm sure, to visit Bala Hack again. You didn't have fun at TV 4.5? I mean, it's still the same game. Really, oh, but. oh, it is not. It's like 4 and 4. It was like half a game. No, it game. was not. It was half it a was game. It was not. 4.5. You're it's kind of an oddball game, because if you look at all of our patches, they're all Roman numerals, except for that one. That is a collector's edition patch. They're all collector's edition. Exactly. <laughs> but that's a collector collector's edition. You are the collector if you've been to four and a half. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's just kind of like, you know, it's like the ugly duckling game. You know, it doesn't really count. <laughs> I hate you. Plus, I mean, if you count that I won the first three anyway, then you, you didn't. No, no, no. You don't win the free. You don't. This is not gambling. This, this is, is not, not soccer. You Tim. cannot tie. It's a push. When, wait, who said you couldn't tie? We tied at like two or three of these. No, we tied well, that's at two. That's what I mean, though. Because I won the one pre preceding no, no, two times. No, no. It's just because you won something ahead of it. No, no. That's not how it works. Yeah, no, yeah. no. That's how it's supposed to work. No. Have you ever played match golf? No, you, know, you play I've, per I've hole mean, instead I've of no, strokes. I have no idea what that is. Okay, well, that's how TVB is set up. No, that's not true. That is not true at all. Not by any means. It is. No. We, I had, that, I, we uh, had that meeting. And that's the one where decided. I took a photo of you shaking my hand? No, no, no. The one where we were like, okay, this is going to be set up like a match golf game. So whoever wins. We never, we never agreed to that. You're, you're a bad person. No, Jet no. and I did. And we you're, no, no. You're a bad person. You're a bad person. Jet can back me up on this. You're a horrible person. Only on Tuesdays. Ah, okay. All right. I have not seen these update in a little while. So let's refresh this and take some questions. Bob, shout out. Cali Boy. Go Cali on. Boy, go on. Shout out accomplished. Oh, somebody just reminded me of something. Darren Thomas. $100, what's the best choice for the 4 cents of the Mercedes Benz here? Well, that'll be up to you to decide. Those are two completely different pistols. If it were up to me, I'd get the Elite Force, but that doesn't me mean too. SOCOM gear Same is here. a bad choice for you. But um, on our blowout deal section, you mentioned SOCOM gear. We have a lot of SOCOM gear AEGs, or a few SOCOM gear AEGs, I should say, in the blowout clearance section. Some of those guns are made by VFC, and they are there for really cheap prices. So this is an opportunity for you guys, if you're interested in a VFC made M4, to check out some of these SOCOM gear guns that are in our blowout clearance section. We're blowing them out. They're not going to be coming back. They are made by VFC, which means they have fantastic externals, awesome internals, um, and it's a great platform to upgrade from if you want to build a super dope AEG. Uh, Quicksilver22, uh, if you ask us to sign your box, and Tim and I are both here, absolutely. Just make sure to put it in the order comments. Uh, the shipping department will bring it out to us. We put a little John Hancock on there. Whenever we're available to, we take the time to sign boxes and even draw pictures. Somebody requested something funny on their box, and Kevin drew a dog that was, like, slobbering all over the place. Yeah. Our graphics department are really talented individuals, and when we, we do get some really weird requests for photos or for pictures stenciled onto the box, and I believe the, the craziest one was having a T-Rex fight the Cupcake Man from Shrek on a rainbow bridge. That was very specific, John. Quite interesting. Mm. Interesting. Yes. Cool. All right. Well, we've got about 20 minutes left. I would that all like pretty to fast. take your Q&A. Uh, I just need more Q to get more in. I know. We need more questions rolling up here. And I have a feeling that YouTube's glitching a little bit. James McGinn. Shout out to Cumbridge. Everybody wants Jason Dimling. Dimling. I, I sincerely apologize. Thierry is correctly. asking why we were promoting Griffin Tactical stuff lately. You know what? That stuff is super cheap. So why wouldn't we promote it? I mean, you're talking about 15 bucks. And then if you add a coupon code on top of that, you can save even more money for a chest rig and or a belt system. It's not a bad rig. And kind of in the same vein as why Lancer Tactical is kind of cool. You have to understand, back when Bob and I started playing, if we wanted to get loaded up for Airsoft for like a Milsim game, it would be thousands of dollars. Well, the, uh, I mean, to be fair. Gun and gear. Yeah, that depends. I mean, at the first Milsim operation I ever went to, 
and it's so old that the DVD for it came out on VHS. So the video, not the DVD. I know, I like, DVD saying, I like saying it like that, though. Um, I bought a gun at the game, and it was the same price as if I would have gotten it at a, like, a mom-and-pop store here, um, you know, in California. That's all there was at the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I say. It was, no um, it was a $300 M16, I believe, A2. A yeah. Um, and it's three hundred dollars. That's no. That's no high capacity magazine. That's no battery. That's no charger. It's just the gun. And nowadays, and that's like I actually talked to some paintballers at SC Village this weekend because they have Decay Nations. Some of them, when I told them, like, no, this is a Lancer Tactical. You know, it's made out of polymer, but it's got a solid gearbox. So you're gonna be competitive when you get out there. You get battery and charger. All you need is BBs and a mask, and you're good to go. And they're like, well, how much is it? I was like, well, it's one hundred eight dollars. So like, what? And I told them how much ammo costs, and they almost like it almost looked like they soiled themselves. Because, you know, paintball is like 4 cents, 8 cents, 12 cents, paintball. 16 cents, 20 cents. Like, yeah, it's expensive. I mean, 4 cents or more around. Definitely. So, I mean, the the Griffin gear kind of fits into that same vein. It's like, you know what? You can actually get out and play for really cheap. You don't have to spend a lot of money to play yourself these days. I mean, and, I mean we're also kind of pushing because we're excited about it. It's such a cool, like, it's, it's nice that... You know, people who want to get into the game can get into it for so much cheaper than they ever have been able to before. It's important, too, to cultivate the new player because you don't want anyone... I mean, that's part of the reason why we're doing this whole Rebel training camp thing is too. we want the new players to feel comfortable. We want them to be able to get out on the field and be competitive because nobody likes getting shot up. And, you know, sometimes reloads can get fumbled, especially if you got your mags in your pockets and stuff like that. So it's a cheap way to be on the battlefield and be effective. And you can save a lot of money, so why not? Yeah, I think a lot of this Rebel training camp came out of uh, Timber Spot 5, where we noticed that, like, a, a huge percentage of the people that showed up to play, or at least, like, around 20% or less, it was actually the first time playing Airsoft, period. I did talk to quite a few people yeah. on your team and my team. It was like, yeah, I mean, me and my son, we just, I was talking to a dad in particular. It's like, yeah, we just heard about this game. We got all this stuff, and we're out here. I'm like, wow. You're really starting it off right. No, I, I told some <laughs> folks, like, man, you're really jumping into the deep end by, like, going to an op for your first time playing Airsoft. Yeah. They're like, we know. We sometimes feel it's a bit much, but it's really fun. You know, I can so. kind of remember. It's kind of intimidating going yes. out to a yeah. field. Especially if you, okay, because when I started playing, actually, it was me and my cousin and a bunch of friends. And we just, you know, played around the backyard with Springers and those little, you know, 16th scale guns. You know, we knew that there was like a whole nother level of airsoft out there, but it wasn't really something that we were ready to get into at the time and so you know when you think about going to a new field or going to a field at all uh it can be kind of intimidating seeing everyone with all their dope stuff that seems like they know what they're doing and so it's kind of nice to be able to have an event like the rebel training camp where you can go be with other novices and it'll be most likely their first time there and to have a community that'll cultivate you know and not like shoot you down so to speak yeah and no, i mean it's it's always nice when you know yeah people are friendly at the event you're going to people are very welcoming i mean that's something that amazed me about the airsoft community as opposed to the paintball community where i was from mm -hmm. uh you know when i go to operations there were there were a fair few of operations like yeah. a couple line calls that i went to where you know the friend i was going with had to bow out at the last second because of family issues and i went by myself like it well i mean there's a tsunami and his wife's from indonesia okay so right. fine you had to you, mention that one. Yeah, well, it's like, I don't want, I don't want to give Sean a bad rep because he's a really great guy. And I well, nobody knew it was him until you mentioned his name now. All right, well, if you see Jumper or any of the Iron Man movies, he did a lot of the CGI. He did. There, yeah, he did. Um, that said, um, you know, the folks at those games are very welcoming because they understand, like, you know, all, most everyone just came from, you know, being an introductory player. So it's... Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think the Airsoft community is pretty good about that type of thing. Yeah. But, I mean, everybody has their clicks, and I think it's the biggest step is, like, getting to the field, deciding, like, okay, I want to do this. Yeah. And so it's kind of cool that the Rebel Training Camp is there. It was really cool that the people that showed up at CVB5 were just like, yeah, I'm totally jumping in this head first. Yep. It um, took me a little bit of convincing. What? To actually get out and play. Oh, yeah. Actually, I didn't even want to, to be honest with you. Our friend David kind of dragged me to... Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. you, you, he basically told you you guys were joining an airsoft team. Yeah, that's kind of how it worked. Is that Actually, I, I had a couple... Because I had been like collecting and playing airsoft for a little while. Um, so I had a couple of gas blowback pistols and stuff like that. But I never really had an EEG for a long time, actually, mm -hmm. into my, my airsoft career. And uh, I was at my friend David's house just hanging out. And he gets a phone call from who is now a good friend of ours, Eric. He's like, yeah, yeah, me and Tim are in for sure. And I look up and I'm like, what are we, what are we doing? Like, you need to consult me about this. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So we joined an airsoft team and it was all, it's all downhill from there. <laughs> yeah, all downhill. Um, I like to answer Strider's question real quick. Bob, are you going to Jericho on Saturday? I will not be out at uh, at Jericho Airsoft this Saturday. Uh, just be doing some. Uh, we have some personal time while you guys are on the East Coast. Um, 
So yeah, we will be sending, I believe, uh, a marketing team out there. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought so we were sending a marketing field team. Darren might be headed. So we a marketing so. team. Yes, very clever. Thank you. Um, so yeah, Airsoft GI will be there. Bob personally will not. But uh, yes, that answers your question. I think sufficiently. Yeah. All right. Username, does the KWA LM4 ship to Canada? I believe that the LM4 is within the FPS limits for Canada, so it should. If you have any questions about anything product related or anything like that, feel free to call our customer service line. Um, and during our hours, obviously, if you call on Friday or Monday, you might get to talk to Bob, but uh, we can answer those type of questions for you pretty easily. Gadget Soldier 716, it was great meeting you uh, this uh, this last Sunday at SC Village. Uh, it's actually a pretty good crowd at SC Village. I mean, in addition to the 2,000 or so paintballers over there. Oh, yeah, the cave range. Yeah. That's good. There are actually some nice paintballers that actually helped us set up the tent because uh, Darren's foot. Yeah, Darren uh, screwed up his ankle. So. That's very cool. Dude, there were there were two guys uh, that were dressed up as space marines. Really? Yeah, like shoulder pads, greaves, like from Warhammer 40K. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's different types of space marines out there. I don't know what they look like, so I'll have to take your word for it. Uh, in in uh, Starship Troopers, they're called Mobile Infantry Team. Yeah, but they're in space and they're Marines. Space Marines. Anywho. If they were in the ocean, they'd be Aquamarines. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, do we sell? I think we sell this shirt, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Uh, the shirt. That or we'd give it away. We used to do deals where we give it away, yeah. Yeah. I mean, normally what happens around the end of the year is that we include a shirt with an order over a certain amount. And I think that was the promo shirt that was included last year. Um, if you like it, let us know, either like on Reddit or in this comment section or anything like that. And then uh, we can plug it in there. Because we're always looking for new ideas. And we kind of go to the shirt because people seem to like it. But uh, if there's anything else you'd like to see or give it away for free, within reason, uh, we can probably set that up and make it happen. 60 Neptune 7. If you would like an extra on your box, just make sure to put that in the order comments and we will attend to it. What did you want in this box? Uh, an axe. Oh, yes. Like a drawing of an axe, not an actual. Levi Newell. Newell. Sorry if I said your name wrong. Shout out. Um, if I don't, uh, this is from Casu Flores. If I don't care about cost, would, it be, would I be better off with a Polar Star or a super upgraded AEG? Tim? It really depends on what you're looking for. I think that the Polar Star really takes the cake as far as reliability goes because there's so few moving parts in the Fusion engine. That's the reason why they designed it that way, is to be ultra-reliable and to provide ultra-performance. Um, but the AEG is just its ubiquitous. You know, It's out there. There's lots of parts available for it, and there's lots of ways you can customize your gun. So it depends on what you're looking for. And also keep in mind the Polar Star, you're going to have to run an external tank and some lines. And so if the realism is something you seek, then the AEG is probably going to be a little better in that respect because you don't have to worry about an airline. But if you want ultra-performance and ultra-reliability, I'd say go with the Polar Star. Uh, I would pretty much agree wholeheartedly with everything Tim said about that. Um, I am right. Uh, you were correct. Uh, no. PKM, no. PKM lover. No. Uh, PKM Especially lover. When it comes to TV. No. No. Uh, <laughs> PKM lover, uh, I appreciate that compliment or uh, what you said. I'm a big fan of Warhammer 40K. Um, someone was asking. What happened to Warhammer 30K? Uh, 20K. Why did it, what's with the 40,000? It's 40,000 years in the future. What, yeah. How, what happened to the development of that? Do you need no story for that at all? Oh my god, there's so much story. Tim, if you want me to go through the 40,000 years between... Just give me this, give me a summary real quick in less than less than five minutes. Less oh, than a minute. Go. Oh my god. So, um, so basically, this takes place 40,000 years after, you would say, like our current available or current time period. Um, you know, there are certain ages that cover like about 10,000 years of time, but essentially there's an age of strife where there's all these different wars going on, humanity spreading all across, across the galaxy. Uh, then there is... Uh, kind of like a galaxy-wide cataclysm where you know we lose we lose uh, I guess communications or the ability to travel between these worlds and essentially there's kind of a civil war going on between Mars and Terra and during that time period the Emperor the super psionic being super psychic being if you will uh, starts uniting the various factions on Terra Earth uh, creating a superhuman genetic uh, uh, I guess legionnaire the, space uh, the precursor to space marines unites Terra unites Mars under the, the leadership of Terra and begins the other races come from that? the other races yeah. Oh, the other uh, like alien races and whatnot. Yeah. Well, basically, as he's doing his uh, uh, the great expansion of mankind, reuniting all these worlds with the seed of uh, uh, human leadership, 
uh, and finding lost primarchs of the Space Marine Legions in the process, uh, they encounter, you know, new uh, alien races. And, you know, after the demise of the Emperor at the hands of uh, the arch enemy Horus, the Emperor doesn't necessarily, this is why it's so it's forever. The Emperor loses his mortal life to his favorite son, and he's entombed on a golden throne to keep him perpetually alive. God, this sounds so stupid when I say it. But uh, essentially... Um, Does it sound better in your head? <laughs> it's, I feel bad because I'm not able to do the story justice because there's so much fluff and but literature. why is everybody fighting? Well, uh, as you'll see in the beginning of just any like codex or any piece of literature, there's actually a whole page that describes the universe as it currently is. And at the end, uh, there's one line that says, uh, there's no peace, there's no respite, there's only war. So essentially there are all these different um, alien races, including very nascent races like the Tau that have just kind of come up. Like, you know, we saw the Tau a long time ago and they were just kind of fish. And then we got cut off from them by a warp storm for like, let's say, a thousand years. We come back and they're this highly technological Gundam wing race. So, you know, things change. The Tyranids come out of a different galaxy or plane. Where's uh, the hammer in this one? You know, well, there's, you know, space marines use hammers. Uh, so do chaos like space marines. War hammer. Well, there are war hammers you can get. Like Terminators can have, uh, well, it's a thunder hammer. Um, but is this like a tool that's used to build things? No, it's a tool that's used to destroy. Yes. Um, and then there are the Chaos Space Marines that split in the Civil War between humanity, which is what got the Emperor killed. Uh, there are Necrons, which are basically space undead. There's Eldar, which are basically space elves. There's the Orcs, which are always really fun. Lost you after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, this is really complicated. Here's the thing. Is I brought in the book. I could literally take you down the timeline and explain everything, but How it big takes is that book. It's gotta be like a big uh, book. the rule book is about that thick. Have you read all the rules? Uh, no, not all of them. Uh, we basically have a pretty detailed overview. Uh, at least Harrison and I and Aaron do right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the codexes, which are basically the specific rules for each individual army, about that thick. Jeez. But the thing is, most of these books, like at least half of it, is fluff, and fluff in the in that storyline. Yeah, like literature, like a backstory to everything that's going on, like. Who wrote all this stuff? How come there isn't a movie out about this? There have been movies made. There was a Space Marine movie that uh, came out a little while ago uh, in Britain, I believe. It's actually pretty sweet. Yeah, but there's was, like somebody's got to make a main. There's like 30 movies. audiobooks. There's oh man, there's probably like at least a hundred different. It sounds like it would stop like Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. Well, as far as like amount of literature and merchandise has put out, been put out, yeah, it probably stops them. No, but like a movie would do really well, wouldn't it? Yeah, possibly. It's just it, it's going to require a lot of CGI or costuming. Which a we lot, have, which we have now. Yeah, well, it'd still be expensive. I mean, dude, if you can make Avatar, so Avatar, 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 you could put together a movie about forty thousand years. Dude, dude, after the Lone Ranger, um, the uh, the Green Lantern, and all those other flops that cost two hundred million dollars plus, you combine the budgets of those. Well, that's what I mean. Like Hollywood's, game. Hollywood's gonna be really hesitant to like do another thing like that. Like Lone Ranger, like should have been just like. Two guys on each on a horse. Like, how much does it really cost to make a movie? Did it really cost? That cost? It's like 200, 250 million. Well, I mean, you got to pay Giant Death and the other guy. Who yeah, but that's like twenty million. Uh, the other guy was played the twins in the Social Network. Did you see the Social Network? Twins? Yeah, there's these two Harvard oh, twins. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was, was him. That was played by one actor. What? And that's the guy from the Lone Ranger. Oh, I guess I haven't seen the movie. Yeah, I don't know his name. Terribly. He's an <laughs> upcomer, but that's, I kind of feel bad because like that was his big breakout movie. The Lone Ranger. Yeah. <laughs> Flops broke out. Yeah, there. that's too bad. Yeah, you're definitely not gonna remember him from the Social Network. I do. He's a pretty good actor. In that. It's it's hard to act against another person that's not there. Like he basically had to shoot one scene as yeah. one twin and then had to reshoot it as the opposite twin. That's yeah. not easy. No, definitely not. Yeah. So that's why I like I like the movie The Moon so much because Sam Rockwell literally plays against another double of himself mm. and completely different reactions. So you're a fan of Big Mama's House. I actually haven't seen that. With Eddie Murphy playing like all the... Was it Eddie Murphy? Yeah. Playing all the characters? I'm thinking of The Nutty Professor. That one too. Yeah. Because I mean, he, he did both. He did a lot of Dude, double getting duty. In, and getting in that sort of costume, like getting a fat suit on, that's, it's hot and... It takes a lot of time. He also can't really go to the bathroom unless things have changed since I've, I've been aware of him. So, <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully they've got a pee shoot in there. Hopefully. Maybe it's just a, an, an internal bladder. <laughs> like you can pee into the suit's bladder. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, right? And then you could do the scene where you have to pee. Never mind. Yeah. No. Never mind. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. I guess we can take a few more questions now. Questions? Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
What do you feel if Allen screw is broken? How do you get out of my gun? Ooh, that sounds like a great question for our tech department, dude Rayer. Yeah, dude Rayer, I would highly suggest, uh, I believe um, customer service lines are about to close down, but give our customer service line a uh, call tomorrow. Ask them that question. Uh, they can either get the text on the line or give you an answer uh, to a tech-related question. They're very good about that stuff. Whew. Username, I thought I answered your question already. I believe that it should. The LM4 should be within the requirements for Canada shipments. But to double check, you should call our customer service line. And if you give them a call right now, they're still open for another four minutes. So give us a call, 909-869-0671, and uh, you can find a definite answer to that. Uh, someone was asking if gas blowback rifles run on green gas. They can. Uh, they can run on green gas. I believe you can put uh, propane in them. Propane in them. I do know that on the KWA guns, it will void your warranty. Um, someone's asking, Rhino USC is asking, RM4 or LM4? Good question. Tim, your response? Uh, it's tough. It's uh, tough, isn't it? Yeah. I have an LM4, but I don't have an RM4, so I'm inclined to lean towards the LM4. But that doesn't take away anything from the RM4 because it is a pretty cool gun. I'm yeah. going to say something similar to Tim for once. Uh, I do like the LM4. I own one, and I love the heck out of it. I don't own an RM4, but I've been waiting for that gun to come out for a while. So... I, for me, that would almost be a flip of the coin because the RM4, you have a recoil and you don't have to use gas and you know you don't have to worry about the temperature affecting your gun. Whereas the LM4, probably a little bit more kick, um, just more realistic more realistic manipulation. Just awesome. So, what the? Gabe Weston, shout out accomplished. Daniel Lambert, GBBR or Polar Star? GBBR for me. Huh? Oh, Polar GBBR. Star. Andrew Campbell. What BBs do I use in my GNG scar? Whatever I can find at the time, usually, is the answer. Um, but no, I normally run the Airsoft GI25s through it. If I have to play at a field where bios are required, uh, GNG is pretty cool. They give some BBs for that type of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> BJ McKay, GTA 5 is awesome, Bomb. Have you tried it yet? Funny story, uh, Josh got it and has been playing it quite a bit. I actually, I think he just beat the story mode recently. And He's I been hogging it all day, and Bob hasn't played at all. Well, here's the thing: is I haven't played a single Grand Theft Auto. I've watched uh, my college roommates play it a lot. I just had a fun time watching it. I was really never into those go around anywhere you want and do things Whatever game. <laughs> well, I mean, like I tried. Um, shoot, what's when you're on the island? You're like supposed to. Not that matter. Um, Final Fantasy. No, no, something where you're supposed to destabilize Solid. a government. Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, I never got into it, and then I tried GTA 5, and I am all in. It is so much fun. It's a lot that of fun. Much fun it is a lot of fun. They sold a billion dollars worth of that game in three days. I mean, that is a lot. Oh, I know on the first day they made $800 million. 800 mil the first day, in three days they broke $1 billion in sales. That's crazy. I think they said the next closest video game franchise was like 15 days, and I think that was like Call of Duty or Mario yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, that's pretty three impressive. Three days to make a billion bucks. Well, I can totally thing. see how it happened because the game is awesome. The game is fun, and also there hasn't been a GTA for like quite five a while. Years. Yeah, so no, I mean, is it really that long? Yeah, I looked it up. Two thousand eight, mm. GTA four came out, so that was five it's years. Up ago, so, I mean, as opposed to like Call of Duty or. Battlefield, they, they come up with a new rendition pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you when you make your fans wait that long, they definitely are chomping at the bit for a new version. So oh, absolutely, they definitely played it right. Um, just cause, yeah. Thank you, uh, you big turd. Just cause what? <laughs> thank you, you big turd. That's his name. <laughs> that is his name. Yeah, just cause is the one where you're. I can't remember if you're a CIA operative, but you basically are on this island to destabilize this Cuban-style government. Um, and you kind of run around and do whatever you want. Sort of thing. Have you seen that movie Mind Hunters? No. It has the only actor I can recall is LL Cool J, but it has a bunch of other actors in it. Um, it's about like these guys and, and a couple of girls that are in training to be like CIA uh, contractors, no, operators, like specifically like uh, station chiefs. No, those psych people, like uh, uh, interrogators. No. All right. Never mind. Okay, that's a good story, Tim. Yeah, like psychic evaluators, something like that. They try to catch like serial killers that are crazy. It's like getting in their mind. Oh, Never mind. oh shoot! I think I know what you're talking about. Profiler. Yep. Yeah, they're Bingo. trained to be profilers, and so they're stuck on an island while one of them is the actual killer. It's not a part of the test, but everyone thinks it's a test. And Kelly Boy, go on. You have been asking about uh, strip stuff uh, on your gun. Uh, we answered that a little while ago. Call the customer service department tomorrow. 
Uh, tell them you have a tech-related question and just tell them what's going on and they can help you out right there. Hey, Bob knows a little bit about playing airsoft in Japan, don't you, Bob? Uh, I do know a little bit. I actually did not get the opportunity to play, but I did see some games while I was there. And there's there's something called Powerball there, which I have never even heard of here, which um, really quickly, from what I've been told and from the photos I've seen, you basically can soup up your gun however you want. You can wear whatever you want. You have to at least have eye protection on. But, you know, people go out there with snowboarding gear on, with helmets on, and it's basically you play until you can't stand the pain anymore. Last guy on the course wins. That sounds awful. Yeah. Uh, if Greg Six, Wong is here, he actually has played yeah, Japan. Yeah, that, that would be someone who's much so, better to answer. He's actually played there. So. Uh, Casa Flores. Hit up Spartan Woman 7 gw on YouTube or Facebook. He's a really cool guy. He would be more than happy to answer your question about playing airsoft in Japan. Yeah, not to be confused with Spartan 3196. That is not the same guy. No. And also, <laughs> I think on his channel, he's got some footage of playing in Japan. Uh, and, you know, make sure to hit his channel up with a subscribe. Uh, he's got some cool new videos Indeed. on there. So. All right, guys. It is a little bit past 530. We are going to have to go... Um, if you've been following us on Instagram and Facebook, uh, you know that YouTube has invited us to their warehouse a couple of times in the past. We are going to another YouTube event right now, so we are going to have to jet. Thanks for joining us for this live show. We'll catch you next Tuesday at 4.30.